In this machine learning class we will see what is human learning and types of human learning. These two topics will come under first unit introduction to machine learning. Okay. First let us try to understand what is human learning and the type of organ system which are supported for uh, human learning that is sensory system, central nervous system, short term uh, memory process that is working memory process and long term memory process and die learning. Die le learning means do it yourself. right? After that the three different types of machine learning that is learning under expert guidance, learning guided by knowledge gained from expert and learning by itself. So, these are the topics will come under uh, today's machine learning class and we will see all those things one by one. First let us try to understand what is learning. Learning is nothing but the process of gaining information through observation that is we have to observe our environment that is the objects which are available in the environment and from those objects we try to gather information. Okay. And gathering information is called as learning here, right? Why do we need to learn? The, this is the next question. So, in our day to day life, we need to carry out multiple activities, ok. We have to do multiple activities in our environment. For that, the learning is very, very important. It may be that is the learning may be very simple or it may be very complex one. Simple learning means simply walking down on the street or doing our homework or chatting with our friends. So, those are very, very simple learning. The more complex learnings for that we have to do a very, very uh, great observations in the environment like deciding the angle of rocket that should be launched. Okay. Why it is important? So, that it can launch on its particular route, is not it? So, these are all somewhat complicated. So, learning is either simple learning or complicated learning. What is human learning? So, human learning means by using our sensory systems that is sensor organs, we try to observe the environment. Okay, so, this is called as human learning. So, here the sensory systems we are having are the sight that is eyesight, smell, taste, sound, touch, tone and mood. This is voice, tone means voice, okay, mood. So, these are considered as the sensory system that will act as an input devices, input devices of our human system, right. And we need to collect all those input by the central nervous system. Here two important organs are there, first one is brain and second one is spinal. Okay. After that we relate the currently gathered input with the historical data. Okay. After relating we try to connect these two things that is the history data with the newly collected data right after that by connecting these two things the learning will taken place ok we learn some information or we act on the environment or we explore or we innovate ok all those things are called as the output ok output via application and transfer. So, this is the final output, final output right. Here the first one is sensory system. The sensory system will act as the input de devices of our human body right. So, those input devices will gather all the inputs from our environment and that enters the human brain and body ok. And most of those information will be discarded immediately only we can observe the required information. Only we can collect the required information right. 
this is the sensory system. So, the purpose of sensory system to gather the information from the environment right and second one is the central nervous system. So, in the central nervous system two uh, organs will be involved first one is brain and second one is spinal cord ok. So, these two uh, organs are responsible for coordinating selected sensory input into rest of our body. So, the information will be uh, transferred to the brain and the rest of our body ok. For that purpose the central nervous system is used ok. It rapidly gathers all the information and organize interprets and makes sense of the input makes sense of the input to prepare our body and mind to adopt and take actions based on need or circumstance right that is the information will be easily passed to all over the body within a microsecond and immediately we can respond for that input right. The third one is short term working memory or it, it is otherwise called the short term memory process right. So, it links the prior knowledge or previous experience with the newly collected information so that we can understand the situation, understand the environment or current state, current state right. Ok. So, create mental visualizations or recognize the familiar patterns in which that is which in turn prepares the brain to establish the relationship, organize information, create categorize and consider new understanding ok. So, the short term memory process will connect to the new information with the existing information. So, which are already stored in our memory so that it tries to understand the current state this one. The fourth one is long term memory process right. So, throughout life this memory will be there and the human brain develop critical connections between short term and long term memory right. So, throughout the life this process will be taken place and it expands our ideas, thoughts, interactions, feelings and visualization of past, present and future are imagined events. So, these are the purpose of long term memory and the brain which is most important organ is is not it. So, the brain pulls retained long term memory into working memory, long term memory into working memory further consideration is given to select thoughts ok. What we have to do that instructions or that decisions will be taken place at this moment. The next one is die learning, die means do it yourself, do it yourself ok which occurs when we apply and transfer new learnings to other and varied circumstances that is in one situation we learn something and we try to apply the same experience for different environment so that we will get new results. The results will be very new here. So, this is called as do it yourself learning ok. That is when learning environment and conditions engage multiple connections to our brain, multiple connections to our brain then humans are more likely to attempt to process, take actions and apply new learnings ok. These things which in turn increase long term memory, increase long term memory and sustained understanding. That means, we never ever forget the things which we learned by ourselves after multiple attempts. The most important one is innovative learning. Here the human explore authentic ways to transfer new ideas and feelings 
to other and varied circumstance that is the past experience will be applied to entirely new environment so that he can create new things. He can create new things or he can provide a solution for very complex problems right and it provides very rich opportunities for increased recall that is recalling the past experience transfer that is transfer that to our new world insight and application that is reach this application reached beyond the limits of subject matter into the real world problems and the requirements are very high here it required reasoning problem solving and communication so these are the requirement of innovative learning types of human learning okay so three types of human learning first one is learning under expert guidance that is by using a teacher or expert we learn something so this is called as direct learning direct learning right and second one is learning guided by knowledge gained from experts right so this is sometimes called as indirect learning that is we apply our knowledge into the new circumstance so this is called as indirect learning and the third one is learn by self that is do it yourself learning the first method is learning under expert guidance here the learning will be very easy and very simple one let us take how infant learns right so the infant learns many things from its parents like parts of body relations brother sister uncle auntie and etc colors fruits birds animals and all the other things so many things the infant learned only from its parents then the boy starts to going to school right then he immediately starts learn from his teachers right like alphabets and digits words from alphabet numbers from digits and the forming of sentences paragraph complex mathematics signs and etc so these are all school subjects isn't it so he learns other school subjects also from this foundation right and then he starts to go for higher studies then this particular person learns more complex and application oriented skills okay for all those things he take help from his teachers who already have knowledge on all these areas right after completing his college okay the person start working as a professional in some field isn't it and there also to get the knowledge that is to acquire knowledge the hands on applications are useful right so almost all phases of human being life there is an element of guided learning and this guided learning is the process of gaining information from a person having sufficient knowledge so from the other person only the person that is uh, we are learning something okay so this is called as learning under expert guidance the second method is learning guided by knowledge gained from experts okay that is learning by past lessons so these type of learning are very much helpful to make decisions okay in different situation otherwise here the knowledge which has been taught by teachers or mentors or guide at some point of time in some other form or some other context and which may be very much helpful in different situation okay for example a baby can group together all the objects of same color okay this means the baby should have knowledge about the colors okay but this colors uh, knowledge may be taught by his parents long back itself that means which is red which is black which is green so by using that knowledge the baby easily group all the objects of same color and when come to grown up kid and he can select one odd word from a set of words okay for that he should have the knowledge about the words verbs nouns which are already taught by his english teacher 
right. So, by, by using that knowledge the boy can easily identify the odd words, right. So, in all these situation there is no direct learning. So, learning from past experience only. The third one is learning by self that is do it yourself method, right. So, in this learning is very powerful one, but it is very difficult one also, ok. In many situations humans are left to learn of their own, nobody is there to teach us, ok. So, we need to observe the environment clearly, accordingly we need to take decisions, right. A classical example is a baby learning to walk through obstacles through obstacles. So, it cannot walk properly and it will fall down many times. After that only it learns to walk on the obstacles right and uh, the next one is riding a bicycle, riding a bicycle. While seeing uh, it seems very easy but when start to ride the bicycle the kid will fall down, fall down many times. So, after uh, so many trials only it uh, learns to ride the bicycle is not it that is not all things are taught directly by others. So, lot of things needs to be learned only from mistakes made in the past. So, the learning from mistakes is called as learning by self ok. Here it is important to do a checklist of do's and don'ts, do's and don'ts based on our experience. Uh, so far we have seen what is human learning, ok, how the human will learn things from its environment, is not it. So, here we have seen the sensory system, central nervous system, short term memory process, long term memory process and daily learning. And after that we have seen the types of human learning, there are three types, first one is uh, learning under expert guidance, learning guided by knowledge gained from experts and learning by self. Okay. And in the next class we will see another important topic from first unit. Thank you.